We come now to a further Japanese project on gravitational wave observation from space, the SAIGO. The talk is presented by Masaki Ando. So um, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Um, I'm Masaki Ando from University of Tokyo, and I would like to talk on the SAIGO, uh, which is a space-borne gravi uh, gravitational wave observatory. So um, in this talk, I would uh, present two missions. Uh, first one is uh, named B de Saigo, and another one is the future mission de Saigo. So I will start from some brief introduction for, for the background. So uh, as you all know, um, LIGO announced the first detection of a gravitational wave signal, and uh, it opens a new field of gravitational wave astronomy. And after that, um, several uh, signal from binary black hole was also announced. And it tells that the uh, mergers of uh, black holes uh, will be a common event in the universe. So this will be a very interesting science case. In addition to that, um, there was a big event last year. Uh, LIGO Virgo collaboration announced the first uh, detection of the gravitational wave signal from the merger neutron star by now. And uh, the signal was detected last year, and uh, the uh, sky localization was identified with a precision of 30 square degree. And uh, it enables us to find the electro electromagnetic counterpart. And uh, uh, the observation by electromagnetic wave uh, tells us a new knowledge, like uh, uh, origin of a uh, short gamma ray burst, or origin of a heavy element in the universe, equation of the state of the Newton star, uh, fundamental physics and cosmology, like uh, speed of gravitational wave and uh, Hubble constant, and so on. So um, the first gravitational wave signal and the electromagnetic uh, counterpart uh, detection uh, demonstrate a new possibility by gravitational wave astronomy. And uh, it also shows a new mystery, like uh, uh, origin of heavier mass black, binary black hole and the uh, origin of the uh, heavy elements, and so on. So uh, currently, we are forming a network of second generation gravitational wave antenna. Uh, so it will be formed in several years by Advanced LIGO, Advanced Virgo, Kagura, and LIGO India. So after that, there will be two ways. One way is to construct a third generation ground wave detector to enhance sensitivity and see uh, further more. And to, there are two uh, pro proposals. One is ET, Einstein Telescope in Europe, and another is CE, uh, Cosmic Explorer in USA. So, and another way is to go to space for lower frequency observation. So um, LISA is being uh, uh, online, and uh, uh, we are proposing this cycle. And there is another space mission proposal like Tenchin and so on. Here, I will talk on DESAIGO. So DESAIGO collaboration has two missions. Uh, first one is B, named B DESAIGO. And uh, after that, we are planning to launch uh, a DESAIGO mission. So I will talk on these two uh, missions. Uh, the first one is B DESAIGO. At first, uh, I should say that the name was changed recently, two years ago. Um, previously, this mission was named as pre DESAIGO. But uh, uh, we renamed to be decided. This is because uh, that uh, after the first discovery of uh, gravitational wave signal, uh, we found that uh, this mission has a lot of science. So uh, pretty name is not so good for science, so we renamed to be decided. Uh, the uh, basic concept of be decided is a space bomb <laughs> gravitational wave antenna formed by uh, three spacecraft. And the target sensitivity is two times 10 to minus 23 power to hertz at 0 0.1 hertz frequency band. Uh, with this sensitivity, uh, there will be a large, uh, in roughly three uh, science cases. The first one is a compact binaries, like a compact a binary black hole and binary neutron star. And the second target is an intermediate mass black hole merger. And the third one is the information of the foreground for future mission uh, design. Uh, currently, uh, we are uh, planning to uh, realize this mission with, uh, within the framework of JAXA, Japanese Space Agency's uh, strategic uh, medium scale mission. And uh, in the best case, um, the uh, earliest timing to launch will be uh, end of 2020s. 
So um, so the admission requirement is the sensitivity of two times ten to minus twenty three power to hertz at zero point one three uh, hertz, and uh, uh, mission uh, lifetime will be larger than three years. So uh, to realize it, uh, realize it, uh, we have this kind of conceptual design. Um, the laser interferometer will be formed by three spacecraft, three spacecraft separated by hundred kilometer from each other. As a laser source of the interferometer, uh, we will use one watt laser with a, a wavelength of green laser. And uh, each spacecraft has a test mass mirrors inside it. And uh, it, that test mass mirror uh, diameter will be uh, 30 centimeter, and the uh, mass will be uh, 30 kilogram. Um, similarly to the LISA mission, um, the uh, test mass mirror is freely floating inside the spacecraft. And the spacecraft will follow the position and the uh, um, uh, direction uh, according to that test mass position. And uh, so this is called drug free control. And uh, by this drug free control, uh, we can suppress the external force like uh, solar radiation pressure, fluctuation, and so on. And the combination of the interferometer, laser interferometer, and uh, drug free control, we can form the uh, formation flight of the spacecraft. The uh, orbit is not decided yet, but the uh, uh, strongest candidate is, is a record disk orbit around the Earth with altitude of 2,000 kilometers and uh, orbital period of 120 mi uh, minutes. So um, this shows a, a comparison between LISA and the BD cycle configuration. Um, in this case, um, as you hear, in the uh, first uh, talk in this session. Uh, the target will be a supermassive black hole uh, binary merger and uh, compact binaries. And uh, it will have a uh, uh, frequency band down to one millihertz or, or something like that. And the uh, interferometer baseline will be a 2.5 million kilometers. And uh, the interferometer will be formed by three spacecraft, so constellation uh, flight of the three spacecraft. And as a laser interferometer, um, LISA will use an optical, trans uh, optical transponder configuration. Uh, I will uh, talk, uh, uh, explain a little more later. On the other hand, uh, in B the cycle case, uh, the target frequency band will be 0.1 hertz. And in this frequency band, uh, the target scientific target will be intermediate mass black hole and binary black hole and binary neutral star. And the baseline length of the interferometer will be 100 kilometers, so much shorter than this. And the uh, um, uh, combination of the laser interferometer control and uh, drug free control, uh, the uh, three spacecraft will be formation flight, will uh, form a formation flight. And as a laser uh, interferometer, uh, we will use a fabric pillow interferometer, like a ground based detector. So I will explain a little more uh, about the uh, interferometer configuration difference, optical transponder or fabric pair cavity. So in this case, uh, they will use the optical transponder. So um, this uh, will have a longer baseline length. So laser beam diameter will be expanded bec because of the diffraction. So um, the laser beam from the first spacecraft will expand it a lot, and uh, only a fraction of the beam will be detected by the second spacecraft. And uh, the second spacecraft has a laser source itself, and uh, the laser beam, laser uh, frequency will be phase locked to the incoming laser beam. And that uh, signal will be uh, sent back to the first uh, spacecraft. And the comparison of the outgoing beam and the backcoming beam um, LISA can measure the length change by gravitational wave. On the other hand, um, the cycle will use a fiber pair cavity like a ground-based detector. Um, the laser beam is directly reflected back by the mirror to the first uh, spacecraft. And uh, these two mirrors will form fiber pair cavity. So all the laser beam will be used in this interferometer. The, Advantage of the, this optical transponder type is the longer baseline length. So the real, uh, acceleration noise to the test mass will be uh, relatively uh, relaxed. So uh, on the other hand, in the uh, 
fabric pillow cavity case in B de Saigo, and we can accumulate a lot of uh, laser, B, laser power inside the interferometer. So the short noise level of the interferometer will be improved. So each configuration has advantage. So uh, this shows the uh, sensitivity curve compar comparison. Um, horizontal axis is the frequency, and the vertical axis is the sensitivity in a strain sensitivity in unit of power to health. Risk curve is this blue one, and the B decide one is uh, this red one. <coughs> so this uh, has a uh, uh, good sensitivity in low frequency band, and the B decide has a uh, uh, good free, uh, sensitivity at the 0 0.1 hertz frequency band. So, um, so this uh, has a longer baseline length. So, uh, the acceleration noise here will be um, improved. So it has a good sensitivity in low frequency band. On the other hand, in B decide case, um, the short noise level is improved. So it has an advantage in the floor level. So um, B decide has a good floor level of sensitivity of uh, 10 to minus 23 or something like that. Um, for comparison, uh, I plotted the ground-based detector sensitivity curve. Um, this white curve is a second generation uh, detector one, uh, like uh, Advanced LIGO, Advanced Virgo, Kagura, and LIGO India. <coughs> and uh, the sky blue curve is for the third generation ground-based detector like ET and CE. So um, B Decigo can bridge the uh, frequency gap between LISA and ground-based detector. Um, so uh, again, I will um, explain about the sciences of B Decigo. Uh, there will be uh, roughly three targets. The first one is the inspire of a compact binary, and second one is the inspire merger of the intermediate mass black holes, and third one is a foreground understanding for future mission. In the, uh, the for the uh, inspire of the compact binaries, um, we can expect a high event rate, like uh, 10 to 5 events per year. And uh, um, because of the longer observation time, I will explain later, um, the parameter estimation error will be very good. So um, it will contribute a lot to the uh, gravitation wave astronomy and also uh, so multi-messenger multi astronomy with electromagnetic waves. Second target will be uh, um, intermediate mass black hole merger. So, um, because of the low frequency uh, sensitivity, um, it, is it will be possible to detect the direct, direct signal from the merger of the intermediate mass black holes. So this will be an original science um, with this be the cycle or a medium frequency uh, gravitational wave detected. The third target is a foreground understanding. Um, so there will be a lot of um, binaries. Uh, so uh, it can be a foreground for the future mission to observe the uh, stochastic by, uh, background gravitation wave from the early universe. So uh, it, is, it is, will be necessary to understand the behavior of this foreground. So uh, this will be a third target of the BD cycle. I will explain a little more in these topics. The first topic is uh, compact binary. So um, as you know, um, this shows the schematic of the uh, Signal, gravitational signal from the binary merger. Um, there will be three phases in spiral merger and ring down. And the B decigo has a low frequency signal, uh, sensitivity, so uh, a B decigo can observe um, one year or several months before the merger. So uh, low frequency and the earlier phase of the spiral can be observed by B decigo, and the merger phase and ring down phase will be observed by ground based detector. The combination of these observations uh, can tell us about the good parameter estimation for mass position and merger time by B decigo and uh, some catastrophic phenomena tells us uh, astrophysics in the merger phase, like uh, equation of state of the Newton star and so on. Uh, again, this shows the um, uh, sensitive curve, and here I plot is uh, one signal example. Um, this is a signal amplitude of, from the 30 solar mass binary black hole at the distance of one gigaparsec. The signal is at, at the beginning from lo at the lower frequency, and uh, one year before the merger, uh, it enters the uh, observation band of B decigo. And it goes up in frequency, and uh, 
about one second before merger, it goes out of the frequency band of B, the cycle, and enters sensitive, sensitive band of the uh, ground-based detector. So the combination of these uh, observations will be very interesting. The second target of BD cycle is uh, intermediate mass black hole merger. So um, there, is, there is a mystery on the history of the super formation of the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. There are roughly two stories. One story is um, we have a large black hole at the beginning, and uh, it increases in mass by accretion. And another story is uh, hierarchical mergers of the uh, smaller mass black holes, and the uh, uh, large uh, massive black hole was formed. So it is difficult to distinguish these stories, but the uh, BD cycle will have uh, um, sense observable range of the whole, to cover whole universe. So by the observation result of the BD cycle, we can pin down the story. So this will be an original uh, science case by BD cycle or medium frequency uh, detectors. So um, converting the sensitiv sensitivity curve, uh, we can estimate the observable distance. So uh, this shows the observable distance as a function of the mass of the binary star. Um, the white one is uh, uh, Kagura and the uh, right one, Bill decided, uh, Kagura advanced LIGO advanced Bill goes uh, uh, observable range. So it will be about uh, 100 megaparsec range for binary Newton star and uh, uh, about one gigaparsec range for uh, 30 solar mass, mass binary black hole. So um, it will cover these events. And this Sky blue one is for the uh, third generation detector, ground-based detector. And the range will be improved by a factor of 10 or something like that. And uh, almost the whole universe will be covered by third generation detectors. And this uh, observable range will be shown in this blue curve. So it has a lower frequency sensitivity and uh, sensitive to the low, uh, heavier mass black hole, binary black holes. So um, it will have good, uh, it will cover whole universe for this mass range. And the B the cycle will be here in red curve. Uh, so it will cover between this ground based detector and the band. And uh, it, is, it will be uh, sensitive to the intermediate mass black hole binaries. And also B the cycle will cover the whole universe for intermediate mass black hole binary uh, mergers. So um, in addition, B the cycle has a good uh, range for uh, even for the binary neutral star. And uh, 100 event per year will be expected. And for binary black hole, uh, it will, it will uh, have a similar performance for, uh, with the uh, third generation ground-based detector. So and the range will be 100 gigaparsec or something like that. So uh, this summarizes uh, um, we decided science cases for compact binary mergers. Um, for event rate, uh, um, binary, uh, so 10 to 5 event per year will be expected for binary black hole, and 100 event is expected per year is expected for binary neutron star. And uh, because of the uh, longer observable range, uh, it will be possible to uh, say some uh, history of the uh, population. So it can be tell us the uh, formation scenario, scenario of the binary black hole. In addition, an uh, interesting one is uh, uh, with low frequency observations, a uh, longer observation time is expected for binary mergers. Um, the signal is uh, 0.1 hertz in 15 days before merger. And uh, uh, because of longer observation time, the uh, parameter estimation accuracy will be improved. And uh, uh, mass and distance to the system and spin information can be extracted. And the more inter interesting one is the uh, localization at merger time. We can predict uh, merger time and the sky position before merger, before merge. So we can send alert before merge to the uh, electromagnetic telescope and other ground-based detectors. 
Um, this shows one example um, parameter estimation accuracy. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, this shows uh, signal to noise ratio and uh, uh, sky localization accuracy and distance accuracy and merger time accuracy. Um, seeing this um, purple curves, um, which correspond to the red shift of 0 0.1, um, signal to noise ratio will be uh, more than 100. And uh, uh, sky localization accuracy will be around uh, a few square degrees. And uh, uh, distance error will be a few percent. And uh, merger time error will be around one second or something like that. So we can send alert that saying that uh, the merger will happen with this semi square degree region with time accuracy of one second or something like that before merge. So this will be a very interesting science. Then the third target of the, uh, we decide with understanding of the foreground. So uh, this shows the uh, spectrum of the uh, gravitational wave signal from inflation. So uh, horizontal axis is the frequency, and vertical axis is now converted to the omega GW, which is uh, uh, gravitational wave energy density ratio to the uh, critical density of the universe. Um, this detector has a good sensitivity, but uh, in the unit of omega GW, it, it has this it, it is this under, uh, this, it has a this under advantage. So um, the sensitivity is not enough to reach to the signal from the inflation. But uh, uh, B de uh, will have this sensitivity, and the future DeSigo mission will reach to this uh, omega GW range. Um, but uh, uh, the problem is the foreground. Uh, there is a lot of uh, binaries in the universe, uh, massive black hole binary and uh, compact, ma compact star, uh, like a Newton star or white dwarf binaries. So these binaries can be a foreground for the observation of the early universe. So uh, we have to understand the behavior of these um, foreground. And uh, BDSIGO will um, measure some of the foreground and uh, demonstrate the subtraction of the uh, foreground. So um, in order to realize um, B the cycle, there are a lot of technical challenges. Uh, so I will not go in detail, but uh, um, important uh, requirement are displacement noise and uh, force noise. As for the displacement noise, uh, the ten, uh, two times 10 to minus 18 meter power to hertz is required. This is an easier requirement than ground-based detector. On the other hand, force noise is uh, severe. Um, it requires t uh, 10 to minus 16 Newton per to health external force. And this is uh, about two orders difficult than this other requirement. So we have to consider about this. The mission target is uh, JAXA's uh, medium scale mission. Um, JAXA has uh, three categories, and uh, uh, medium scale one is uh, one of the largest ones. I'm sorry for the Japanese slide, but uh, anyway, um, we are planning to propose a mission to this uh, framework. And uh, JAXA is uh, announcing the, its roadmap when the uh, mission, uh, mission call is happening and when it will be launched. And the uh, earliest timing for the next mission call will be 2022, so we are planning to apply it. So in the rest of the time, I will explain a little more about the DECIGO mission. Future mission. So after B we are, we will launch the uh, Saigo mission. The target of the Saigo is to observe the early, very early universe. To realize it, um, the interferometer configuration is similar to B Saigo, but the uh, baseline length will be exp expanded by ten times. So the baseline length will, will be thousand kilometers. And uh, um, for the interferometer configuration, the beam diameter will be large, and the beam uh, mirror diameter will be large, and the mirror will be heavier than B the cycle. But uh, this concept will be same. The um, most important target of the cycle is the observation of the very early universe. The uh, early universe we can observe now is uh, CMB, and uh, uh, it is it, we observe the uh, universe after uh, about 40, 400 
thousand million, uh, four hundred thousand years after the beginning of the universe. So before that, uh, it, is, it will be possible, uh, impossible, almost impossible to observe the universe by electromagnetic wave because of the scattering in the uh, high energy phenomena. But the gravitational wave will pass through this uh, high energy environment, so we can directly observe the early universe by gravitational wave. There is another uh, mission to observe early universe by gravitational wave. Uh, it is uh, uh, CMB beam polarization missions, uh, like a bicep, a right bird, uh, Planck, and so on. And uh, in these uh, CMB polarization missions, uh, they observe the early, very early universe by using the CMB's rust scattering surface as a screen. Um, the primordial gravitational wave will make uh, so polarization pattern to this screen, and it can be observed by microwave telescope. On the other hand, uh, this cycle will observe the direct signal from the early universe. Uh, this, uh, this result in the difference of the uh, frequency band to be observed. Uh, CMB polarization measurement will uh, measure the gravitational wave signal at this frequency band. On the other hand, this cycle will observe the signal at 0.1 frequency band. So um, the combination of these two um, observ observations uh, will tell us the information, the spectrum of the uh, signal. So we can extract the sig uh, information about the uh, signal to noise, uh, so tensor to scalar ratio information, and the uh, uh, evolution history of the universe from this spectrum. One example is this. Um, if we watch there are some cutoff in this spectrum, this can be correspond to the um, uh, timing of the, the heating of the universe. And uh, if we decide to observe directly about on this cutoff, uh, we can know when inflation ends and when Big Bang happens. So now I will summarize. Um, so first observation, a uh, first direct detection of gravitational wave was uh, achieved by LIGO 100 years after the theoretical prediction by Einstein. And it opens a new field of gravitational wave astronomy, and we obtain a new probe to understand the universe. And the field will be expanded by antenna with beta sensitivity, like a third generation detector, and with different frequency by space detectors. And uh, uh, as you, we had in the previous talk, uh, Japanese Kagura will improve the source parameter estimation accuracy, and uh, we are, uh, Kagura will planning to join the network. On the other hand, BD Saigo will provide a fruitful science in low frequency band, and the uh, future D Saigo will be uh, one of the dream of the science. It will be able to observe the very early universe directly. And uh, at last, I will show some related sessions. Um, on this uh, Monday, uh, we have a ground-based detector session, and uh, yesterday we had a medi medium frequency gravitational wave detection session, and uh, tomorrow we will have a decigo parallel session. So uh, technical detail and theoretical prediction can be presented there, so please attend it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Questions? Uh, a question about the uh, history of supermassive black holes. You mentioned two histories. A was uh, a large black hole that accretes. B was hierarchical mergers. But I believe there's a C, a third possible history, is that the supermassive black hole is uh, actually itself primordial and formed with almost its present mass in the first three years of the universe. Mm -hmm. Can you comment upon that? Oh, um, I have no comment, but uh, thank you for that comment. <laughs> yeah, so, so maybe um, it, it will be categorized, included in A, in this um, observation result. So we cannot distinguish A or that C by this observation, but uh, yeah, we have to consider about that possibility. Yeah. Thank you very much.
Okay. Uh, can you please put the plot uh, with the uh, decigo and, and the CMB from inflation, the gravitational wave from inflation? Uh, uh, okay, that, that, that's one. Uh, I mean, this is a very fascinating plot, of course, uh, but I, I guess that uh, the level of gravitation, gravitational waves from inflation somewhat depends on an no. hypothesis on no. R. Yeah. So what is the hypothesis behind uh, the curve? Yeah, so uh, this is a slightly old um, plot by uh, plotted in this year, 2009. And uh, uh, the um, assumption is a slow roll inflation, so based very simple slow roll inflation model. And uh, um, including the history of the uh, universe, so expansion history of the universe, and there is some, so not flat spectrum it was obtained. So uh, this is, was a result of the uh, numerical simulation by the Kroyan and Sun. Yeah, what is the value of I don't remember it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, zero, ten to, yeah. 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 Um, I remember exactly, but uh, ten, uh, ten, uh, zero point zero two. Uh, sorry. Zero point zero one or zero point zero uh, ten to minus three or something like that. And uh, the uh, level depends ten to fourth, ten, one over fourth of the R value. So only a little. Um, difference will happen because of the R, R value. Yeah, anyway, please uh, refer to that paper. <laughs> uh, there is also a paper to future mission, Big Bang, o Big Bang Observer in, in the future. I mean, can you compare the satellite, uh, um, I mean, what are the distances for Big Bang Observer and the SIGO? Do you know this? Or? Oh, um, so I'm not a suitable person about to talk about the Big Bang Observer, but, but uh, um, I'm in my understanding, BBO is now no no one is seriously considering about the big realization of BBO. <laughs> is it right? <laughs> uh, well, I'm not commenting on that. I'm, I have another question. No, no. What is limiting your low frequency sensitivity? You you were promising a quite deep. Sensitivity, right? So what is limiting your acceleration noise? Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit, very good question, critical question <laughs> to answer. Um, so um, uh, there are a lot of um, noise sources, and one is uh, uh, thermal radiation around from the surrounding uh, components. And the uh, Brownian motion of, of the residual, residual gas is also important. And uh, also um, external uh, magnetic field will be uh, will have a, a so stringent requirement. So these three will be a um, critical noise source in the current uh, understanding. Um, we are assuming um, I don't remember a uh, ten to minus eight or something like that, uh, eight pascal or something like that. Yeah. Uh, what is um, the lower mass limit for primordial black holes you hope to detect by BDC go. Lower mass limit for primordial black holes. Oh, I see. Uh, it is out of Thank you. Of this. So, so please expra extrapolate from this plot. So, yeah. So for one solar mass merger, uh, this be the side will have an uh, observer range of uh, gigaparsec. So it will be possible, but uh, lower, mass, lower mass than that will be uh, difficult to observe. Okay. Oh. What is the sensitivity of your initial sensor or test mass? Because according to the curve, that your sensitivity is much higher than the LISA, at least for water. So, how can you get? It's asking the acceleration figure. Yeah. The stray acceleration figure, how many meters per second square per meter? Ah, yeah. I see. Um, so, requirement is uh, at 10 to minus 16 Newton per hertz. Um, where was that? Yeah. Yeah, this one. 
So in this case, it, this was 10 to minus 14 youth parallel health. So, ah, 30 kilogram. Yeah. Okay, I, okay. I just wanted to ask uh, how at an uh, orbit of only 2,000 kilometers, you can be uh, sufficiently free of uh, gravity gradient noise from the Earth's spherical harmonics, and um, uh, and also, uh, how do you obtain a stable orbit uh, for the three spacecraft without applying very large forces? Yeah, uh, it is also a critical question we are now investigating. investigating. Um, in the uh, preliminary uh, investigation of the uh, numerical simulation, uh, it is slightly difficult to um, realize this orbit. So uh, we are considering to uh, make some um, compromise in observation time or to form the uh, orbit or um, to change the uh, orbit from this. So yeah, it is a critical discussion now going on. Okay, I think we have to stop now. I'm so sorry, uh, but there's another announcement by Raymond. Uh, well, we are uh, having 